Continuing from the previous thread. This is the place to swap your spooky stories, whether they happen to you, someone you know, or if they're just spooky legends that you enjoy. OC is highly encouraged. I will try to share some more stories myself, but I will be bumping with green text to keep it active for now, because I'm very busy at the moment. OP here. Back with some OC. A coworker shared with me a few years ago. He and I worked together as drivers for a warehouse. We spent a lot of time together. This was the only spooky experience he ever shared with me. B from Houston, Texas. Years back. They're used to a hospital there that shut down. Stayed vacant for at least 10 years before my buddy ever went. It was supposed to be haunted and the only security was a fat dude who drove by, rarely, on a golf cart and told people not to hang out too long. Place became a bit of a weekend hangout spot for teens and young graduates. Especially during Halloween. At the time, co-worker was a seeing a girl. This was senior year of high school, and he hadn't had much luck with girls. This one was a real prude and my buddy decided maybe the spooky hospital would loosen her up. The usual crowd was gathered there when they arrived. It was late, around 9 p.m. Someone had an ice chest full of beer and offered them some. Buddy throws one back, the prude refused of course, and in they go. Pick related to give you a clear idea of the place, Buddy and his date had to go up a massive set of stone steps and through a large front door. Inside they find a mess. Loose boards everywhere, empty cases of beer, random blankets, spray paint canisters littering the floor, etc. But upstairs is the real danger. It's somehow darker up there, even with the busted out windows. And the two of them find a big hole in the floor. If they hadn't been watching their step, they might have fallen right through. A few people had injured themselves that way, my buddy later found out. The prude is not loosening up at all by this point. But she is beginning to sidle up close to my buddy so he's feeling good when suddenly his date gasps. Grabs his arm. I just felt someone touch me she says. This haunted business is all right, my buddy thinks. He grabs his date close and tells her, let's just go check out that one room over there and then we'll leave. Buddy was just trying to draw out the experience of course. He didn't know where he was going. Entered some room that looked like nobody had been in it in years. The only place in the entire building where the floor was noticeably coated in dust. None of the usual trash like you saw in the rest of the place. The dust was so thick that they left behind prints. And the room was freezing. My buddy's date began pleading with him to leave. Said she felt static electricity in the air and grabbed my buddy's hand. Placed it on her hair. My buddy admitted it felt charged, which did seem a little weird since he didn't feel anything himself. He took her hand and led her out of the room. Carefully walked down the steps. By the time they were back at his car he felt comfortable enough to kiss her. She didn't resist. After that, the two of them got back in the car and drove home. They discussed the experience and laughed over how spooky it was. Only then did my buddy feel free to mention something that he had been afraid to point out at the time. It happened when his date pointed out the static electricity, just before my buddy led them out of the room. He would looked past his date and noticed something on the floor. An extra set of footprints in the dust. My buddy told me it was possible he just hadn't seen the footsteps as he entered, even though he'd been paying attention to the floor to avoid another potential accident with a hole. He said his and his date's footprints came straight into the room from the entrance, but the other set came from one of the far walls, adjacent to the door and terminated at a blank wall. Going to share some brief ones now. These are some stories I collected from different people about weird experiences surrounding the death of a loved one. First one comes from an old classmate. She wakes up in the middle of the night. Had a terrible nightmare involving a horrific car crash. Vivid scene of car flipped upside down, in flames. Sister trapped in the driver's seat, screaming and burning to death. Despite how real it felt, she doesn't call her sister for fear of sounding silly. The next day she finds out her sister died in a terrible car wreck. Car flipped over off the highway. 
sister died trapped in the driver's seat. Burned to death. This next one is kind of sweet. It's from a coworker I used to hang out with. Running errands, driving. Suddenly pulls off the road into a parking lot. Sits there staring at the steering wheel. Sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach. Has the urge to call his son. Son answers. He's crying on the phone. His longtime girlfriend was killed in a hit and run. He only found out a few minutes before my coworker called him. Damn, there were some more, but I can't find them in my notes. Oh well. Guess that'll do for now. This next one is kind of sweet. I didn't mean to imply that it was sweet that the girl died lol. I just found it sweet that maybe my coworker and his son had such a strong bond that it somehow clued him into his son's emotional state. I have heard similar stories like that, and I have experiences where my mom and one of my friends each called me on separate occasions when I was in a really tough spot. I spent 20 minutes writing my experiences down before I realized I was a few hundred over the character limit. I'll leave an extremely abridged version of the background before I begin, friends and I are on a trip throughout the southwest, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, camping in various spots. I have a few stories, but I mainly want to focus on two. Can't go into full detail of why we were there without getting off topic and spending a lot of time explaining stuff that isn't germane to the stories themselves. So I'll begin. Be me. Redneck slash out slash slash K slash fag. Friends with me. Similar backgrounds. We are camping at a spot in West Texas where people come to shoot guns. Texas doesn't have a lot of BLM land. The few bit of acres that exist are ravaged and completely trashed. We are in one of those such spots. Whatever, Moo Texas and Moo Redneckisms. Anyway, we're shooting guns all through the day. Lighting off fireworks. Drinking a little bit. We decide to do target practice at a small hill to the northwest. Adjacent to side by side trail. Trail isn't large enough for conventional vehicles. Only saw one RZR all day and it was going opposite direction. Decide it's safe. Start firing. Halfway through shoot. A goddamn Dodge Charger is going down the road. Immediately yell for my friends to cease fire. Drop my gun. I just about shat myself. Thought I just killed someone or shot a vehicle. They stop for a few seconds, take continue. We kind of wave in an apologetic mater. About a half mile up the road is a hill that leads back to the main road. They stop. See a person get out and get on a phone. Have no idea what they're doing. Thinking they're calling the cops or something. We kind of sit there, freaking out. No idea what's about to happen. Person gets back in their car. They approach. A million thoughts are racing through my mind. Is this it? The day I'm about to die in a gunfight with some stranger in the middle of the goddamn desert. Friends think similar thoughts. I wave them down. They asked for help with their RZR, off-road vehicle to uninitiated. Agree and apologized for shooting toward them. Act confused, as if I didn't. Think it's some messed up cartel trap or something at first. But find their shit and it's on side. Help flip it. They thank me take off hastily. Really weird people but whatever. They come back later in day with trailer. Their trailer is filled with sandbags, remember this. Wave and think all's well. They wave back and we don't see them again. Come sunset we decide to hike and get pics. Beauty.jpg As we go back to campsite notice a collection of animal skeletons. Ram and dog skulls in a circular shape. Really weird. Kinda spooks us cause it was close to where we set up camp. We go back to camp. Outside is absolutely trashed. Nothing stolen, but all our food, ammo, supplies, scattered. See piss puddle near truck and think it was an animal. But then we noticed near tire marks. We decided to nope the hell out of there. Load truck as quickly as we could. 
had guns ready just in case we were being surveyed from a distance. Drive down that dinky road as fast as possible without screwing my suspension up. As soon as we approach the blacktop we see a shitload of sandbags blocking the road. Lol 4x4 engage and go around it. Get to the interstate as fast as I could. That's when me and my friends realized that down in Texas, the only land is for private owners. No public land is safe in that state, second story isn't nearly as eventual, but still really weird. Jump ahead two days later. We're in Maricopa County, Oz. Few more friends from back home decided to meet us out there. Some flew, some drove. We decide to do a quick escapade to the desert for some quick shooting and fireworks. It's around 8 p.m. and it's dark already. Me and the friends I traveled with get a head start. Right before the blacktop turns to Desert Road, there is a steakhouse restaurant. Open seasonally. Never eaten there, so we agree to make it the meetup spot. Friends were delayed so we ate ahead of them. After meal and friends are just barely about 45 minutes out. We decide to go outside for smokes and a quick walk. To give you a better idea. This is rural as Arizona. This restaurant is the only semblance of business for miles. Only thing around us is desert and private ranches. So we decide to play a little spook on our friends. Have our friend who looks like Gandalf stand in the dark as our friends were about 10 minutes out giggling and giddy. He's on one side of the road, we're on the other. Smoking and talking about shit. All of sudden Gandalf starts freaking the hell out. Think he's joking. Then he says, dude, what the f is that? Points towards the other side of the road. Hard to tell, but looks like hooded figure, and a bonfire. Funnily enough our friends roll up, they freak the hell out. But at this point he's equally freaked, so before it got any weirder, I led them deep in the desert and was the funnest night of our lives. I never did honestly did figure out what it was, I was semi-delirious from lack of sleep over those days of travel. Maybe my city slick friend saw his first wild clansman, tech. Pick related. Don't think they're in Buisness anymore but shout out to them. I have one. My dad told me this. Have based grandpa. Sadly, he passed away. Before he died, he loved spending time at his cabin. Did some hunting and fishing up there. Spent the lonelier hours playing chess by himself. After grandpa dies, dad rummages through the cabin for anything that might be of sentimental or financial value. One thing he leaves behind is grandpa's chess set. It's a cheap one anyway and not worth anything. Dad comes back a few times to check on the cabin. Finds the chess set open, with pieces on it. It's like that each time he visits. Dad thinks it must be squatters or just some disrespectful campers slash hikers breaking in and using the cabin without permission. Decides to spend a week there to scare off anybody who might be using the cabin on the sly. Puts away the chess set. Passes the night there. Next morning, the chess set is open again, set up with the pieces as though someone were playing during the night. Dad thinks him, not good. Figures these must be some brazen intruders. Feels lucky they didn't attack him. He's confused though because he locked the front door. And the back door makes a ton of noise when open so he knows he would have heard that. Fast forward to that night. Dad doesn't sleep. Stays up all night by the front door with his gun in his lap. The entire night, his attention is focused out the front window. He isn't worried about the back because, again, he knows he'll hear anyone trying to come in through that door. Long before they actually get inside. All night, nothing happens. When morning comes, Dad is ready for some shut eye. He gets out of his chair, turns around to head to his room. There on the table, in the same room he's been sitting in all night, just behind his chair, is the chess set. It's open, with the pieces set up on top. This story of mine has always made me think if I really met whoever was playing basketball with me as a kid. 
There was no weirdness involved other than some paranormal stuff. Be me around 2001. Six years old. At a family gathering out in the countryside. It was cloudy outside, drizzling. Board.jpg Go outside with a raincoat and a hat to keep me dry. Eventually stumble upon a basketball court down the road. There was a man in his 30s 40s playing basketball all by himself. He also had a blue bicycle close by. Hollered at him and asked him if I could join in. He said sure. He gave me the basketball and guided me along. We both had a lot of fun and shared a lot of laughs. 20 minutes passes and he has to go. Sad.jpg He told me that maybe one day we will meet again and play more basketball. See him get up on his bicycle and go his way. Shouted bye. He shouted bye back. Go back home and find my older sister talking to my parents. Apparently she also went out and saw me, apparently just as the man said he had to go. Parents asked me worryingly what did you do out in the rain? I said played basketball with a cool dude. My older sister told my parents I was out there all by myself. Shock.jpg It still boggles my mind that it wasn't even real, that the man that I had so much fun playing basketball with didn't exist. It was one of the reasons why I started believing in the paranormal. This happened in the late 2000s sometime. Boring, but here's a bump. Aunt and uncle are letting me and mother stay at their home on slash near Bull Run Battlefield. They go on a trip somewhere, and leave the house to us too. The house was cheaply built on a hill in the 70s, technically has two stories, but looks like one story from the street. Previous owner was a weirdo who would go outside naked to do chores, put lint in the windowsill, hoard stuff, etc. Anyway, uncle is constantly working on slash remodeling the house. Nothing is ever perfect for my aunt however, she always has him change stuff. By this time, stairway is in the middle of the house, leading down to basement floor, which has you turn hard left, down a narrow hallway that leads to a small room with large windows. Adjacent to that room are double sliding doors that lead to the master bedroom, making it a den. One night, past midnight, when my mother and I were sleeping in the master bedroom, I heard what sounded like heavy boot steps suddenly, yet slowly, going down the stairway. Hear jingling with each step. Not necessarily frozen in fear, but definitely unsettled. Don't say anything to mother, as our backs are turned to each other. She doesn't say anything, so I figure she's asleep. Steps continue until about the middle of the stairway. Nothing afterwards. Next morning I ask my mother if she heard them last night. She said yes, but she didn't want to scare me. Thought it might have been an invader, but after they stopped abruptly, she thought maybe it was a spirit from the war, a cavalryman. This is the first, and only time I personally have experienced anything remotely close to paranormal. I'm still skeptical, as I was young, and would let my imagination run wild with things because this was during a time when I was first exposed to country living. My mother is also a firm believer in the paranormal, ghosts, crystals, whatever else, and so she prone to simply explaining any phenomena as supernatural. Another story that happened in the same house, maybe a year or so before we got there. Cousin, who is in her teens, is staying in a room that my uncle built where half of the kitchen used to be. You enter the front door, and on the right, there's the room door. She and her mom have a complicated past, still going through things. Her bed is up against the wall in the far left corner from the door, with the TV mounted on an extendable swivel on the closest right corner. Windows on the same wall as the TV. She has her back leaned up against the wall, watching TV. Suddenly she feels a pressure on her chest, and it's getting more intense by the second. She tries moving, but can't. I guess she couldn't scream for help, as the force was pushing the wind out of her lungs. Eventually it relents, and she runs crying to her mom's room. I forgot if she only slept with her mom and stepfather that night, or if she didn't for a few nights. Either way, 
she was pretty freaked out. Everyone didn't know how my aunt was to her. So we all thought she was a bad kid, deserving of whatever happened to her. My mother figured it was a spirit punishing her for her energy, or what have you. Anyway, I came to the conclusion that she didn't deserve all of those negative opinions about her, and so maybe this spirit was just malevolent? Not saying she didn't do some stuff she wasn't supposed to, but I don't blame her not wanting to be around her mom now knowing what I do. And again, I don't really believe in this stuff, and so maybe she was just having a panic attack or something. Everyone didn't know. Wow, bad English. I'm tired. Here's another from my cousin. Cousin, her husband-to-be, and their little one are traveling on the highway at night. They have to pull over because husband-to-be needs to pee. Pretty dark outside, near they think a farm, but there is a tree line that he steps into, and there are trees going back as far as they can tell. After he is done, he starts to walk back to the truck, but notices something in the distance. It's a light, forgot what color, maybe blue? It starts to get closer, brighter even. They both see it, and husband-to-be runs to the car. They get out of there. Cousin looks up the area that they were in the next morning, and apparently there have been reports of a light appearing in the woods there, strange stuff happening. Just so happens that during the same night, shortly after they had left, there was an accident where a truck slash van flipped over along the same tree line where they saw the light. That's all for now. Me and my co-workers were talking about dreams and creepy premonition shit. One of my co-workers who is Russian told me a real dream that her grandma had. Be Russian babushka in grey Soviet bloc hellscape. Hear loud knocking at your door in the middle of the night. Oh shit it's probably the KGB. Open door. There are unsmiling men in suits. They demand to be let in and to see your husband. Tell them no and to go away. They refuse, become more adamant. Again refuse, tell them to go away right now. All the men in suits silently look at each other. They walk away without saying a word march upstairs instead of downstairs where the door to the outside is. Wake up from crazy dream. Find out that your neighbor in the apartment right above you actually died last night. True story as told to me by a person who had no reason to lie. Alright, here's a shortish one. Be me, 10 years old in the early 2000s hanging out with friend, sleeping over that night. His single mother is Polish and kept a lot of stuff from her old town around her apartment. She goes out to work and leaves us alone, and during a game of truth or dare we end up looking through her closet. We find this weird thing, sort of like a cone of thick brass wire with a point at the tip and a little chain attached to the other end, looked kinda like pick. The same box we found it in has some notes in Polish, handwritten, and a cross-shaped piece of wood. Friend says the notes say it's some kind of fortune-telling device. We hide it away for later that night. Friend's mom comes back, we eat supper, play some vidya, then she goes to bed. Naturally we're not asleep and we pull out the weird pendulum thing. Way it works is that one person puts the cross on the ground and spins it while the other closes their eyes and holds the pendulum. Depending on what way the pendulum swings you get yes, no, or ask again slash to no. He holds it first and I ask a few dumb things to test, get good answers, we agree to swap every three questions. Then it's my turn, so I'm holding with my eyes shut and he spins the cross. Then he asks a few questions in Polish, I don't know Polish if that wasn't clear. Laughs after the first one, then gets a bit more serious, then goes silent after the third. Asks me if I knew what he was asking say no, and pass him the pendulum, he's looking a bit spooked. I ask three questions, does girl like me, is God real, does this really work? No, ask again, yes. Tell my friend he's a dick, and he looks confused. Take the pendulum and close my eyes. Three more Polish questions. At the end, my friend rips the pendulum out of my hand, and shoves it back in the box, we're not doing this anymore. Why not? He won't tell me. 
Time skip 10 years. We're hanging out and the topic comes up. Why did you want to stop? I don't know how you did it, but you really freaked me out with that shit. I was just holding the thing. You really don't know what I asked? No. The first set of questions, I don't remember well, but it was something about my grandpa. You got them all right. Well, it was just yes or no, or maybe. The last ones were, is there something in the room with us? Can you lie? Say yes then no then yes again if you want to hurt us. I get some chills because I know what's coming. Let me guess. Yes. Spin. Then it went from yes, to no, to yes, then spun around again. F.U.K. I haven't spoken to the guy in years now, he moved away and got married, but I've never learned a single bit of polish in my life. I had no idea what he was saying to me. My eyes were closed so maybe he was just messing with me, but he seemed very serious, and after getting more into slash x slash shit I have to wonder. There was a pedo in that apartment building who died when we were very young, and he was on the 20th floor where my friend ended up living, we both used to live in the same building but on the 8th and 11th floors, he moved up when my family moved across town into a house. Can't help but feel like some quick thinking on his part stopped us from getting into deep shit. Be me, age 11 or so. Live in rural Ontario. Friend had forest and swamp behind his house. His dad carved out trails for the ATVs. Buddy and I were walking through the woods one day. Went off trail, ventured into brush taller than we were. He's ahead of me. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a head and shoulders, but completely black, like a shadow, rise over the brush, and dip back down. Chalk it up to my imagination, and say nothing. Emerge from brush, onto wide trail maybe 10 feet wide. Take a few steps. Out of nowhere, about 6 feet ahead of us, sprints a shadow, from the brush on the left, into the brush on the right. Picture someone hunched over, running, but like a shadow. Made no noise. Brush undisturbed. Buddy freezes. Looks at me. I look at him. We turn back, and run all the way up the hill to his house. His mom says it was probably a coyote. No chance in hell was that thing a coyote. Been afraid to walk in the woods alone ever since. Second experience. Be me, age 13 or so. Still in rural Ontario. Cable didn't exist, so we had TV antenna on the side of the house, and the TV in the basement. Eating dinner upstairs with mom and sister. Hear voices from down below. Full out conversation, two distinct voices. Can't make out what they're saying. We go quiet. My mom asks if we turned the TV off. My sister and I both tell her we did. Mom asks us to go check. Too freaked out, so she goes herself. Returns upstairs a moment later. Confirms TV was off. Voices have stopped mom's best guess is that, since cell phones were becoming more widespread, our TV antenna picked up somebody's phone call. Never actually figured out who, or what, was speaking. I shared this story just once in a thread about mental hospitals, thinking it was a thread about medical hospitals so nobody really read it as it was off topic. It's not that scary, but it is 100% true. Not gonna green text it, I'm bad at it. Back when I was 25 and still strong and kind of good looking, I got a lung infection which caused bacterial pneumonia and I had to be hospitalized. I was very weak and ran a fever, but was otherwise okay and sane, so I'm sure I'm not making this up. Most of my treatment had to do with sticking needles into my veins. Every day I got at least 3 to 4 IVs of antibiotic medicine and those saline drip things straight into my vein and also got my blood taken to analyze the status of the infection at least one to two times per day. The nurses were very professional and did all the needlework painlessly and quickly like they should. These nurses treated me for the whole work week, but they left for the weekend. A new nurse took their place. A short, young, kind of pretty looking blonde girl who was around my age. She was to take care of me for the weekend. 
When she came in late Friday night to stick a new four into my arm vein, she did this also completely painlessly. But during the last second of the procedure, she literally jerked the needle, so it moved around, tearing my skin a little and causing a small blood trickle to erupt from my arm. This wasn't an accident. I was watching her. She literally performed the procedure like a pro, then kind of made a short pause, then pulled on the needle making me bleed on purpose. When this happened, she kind of froze. Botching a simple procedure like that and causing quite some pain to a patient should have made her act real fast and all, but instead of that, she spent the next 15 to 20 seconds motionless, just staring at the bleeding she caused. She was almost glassy-eyed, just staring at a tiny trickle of blood running down my arm. She looked half dazed, half aroused honestly. Less than half a minute later, however, she unfroze. She began apologizing profusely for hurting me, nearly teary-eyed, cleaned me up in seconds, patched up the wound and stuck me within four again. To this I told her something along the lines of hey, don't worry, this was the most interesting thing that happened to me here all week. To this she completely dropped the whole apology act, gave me a warm smile and said something like really? You thought it was interesting huh? Then she just left. Saturday morning she came into my room again, to take some blood work. Again, she did this painlessly. But as the vial was filling up with my blood, she turned her head and gave me a look. It was a completely silent look, kind of anxious yet playful, like she looked at the needle in my vein, then at me, then at the needle, as if she was asking me without any words can I? Can I do it again please? And I just nodded. Without saying anything she unscrewed the blood vial, put it into the lab tray, but instead of then carefully taking the needle out of my hand vein, she jerked it again, like last time, making it scratch and tear my skin from the inside and cause a bleeding. She poked a hole in my vein this time, and if you ever saw a vein open up, it makes this tiny fountain of blood that sprinkles around due to blood pressure. She then froze up again, just watching this tiny fountain spray her hands, my hand, my bed sheet and my bed table red. Her eyes were like blue glass beads. She wasn't even breathing, it was like seeing me bleed put her under a spell, like it was the best thing ever, like she lived her whole life for moments like this. And dude, I swear I never had any BDSM style urges, I was never into blood play, I literally learned the word blood play only after I was released from that hospital and told this story to a friend. I was always disturbed and scared by blood like all normies, and something like this would have bring me closer to vomiting than to arousal at any time in my life. But at that moment, when I saw her literally melt from the sight of my blood spraying all over, I got this savage primal feeling in my body. I was too weak from the sickness to even get a heart on, but I felt like if I could, I'd do unspeakable shit to that girl, and all of that unspeakable shit had to do with blood and pain and the sweet ecstasy of it all. Now at the moment of typing this out, these thoughts scare me a bit. But at that moment they felt like the most normal vanilla thing ever. A moment passed, she got back to normal, took care of the wound she caused, but this time before leaving, she kind of petted me on the head. Like you pet a dog, kinda, but there was so much gratitude and affection in her eyes dude. Them were real honest to god bang me eyes. We did this several more times during the weekend. We never spoke, she just came in, sat on my bed, and several times when I had the strength to sit in my bed instead of lying down, she sat on my lap as she made me bleed a little. Same look of glassy eyed senseless ecstasy on her face each time. She petted my head or my face afterwards each time. She was also okay with me holding her tight around the waist as she sat there. It was a wordless mutual understanding between us. She no longer wore gloves. I remember her dipping her fingers into the blood. I remember how much it hurt by Sunday, I had bruises and inflamed little scratches all over. All the times it happened, I hated myself for being bedridden and weak as hell, barely strong enough to sit. I had an urge I cringe of even describing right now. I wanted to grab her and bite a chunk of her neck off, tear her skin apart with my nails, drink her blood, get all covered with it, all messy, and then let her do the same and more to me. Not out of anger, but because at that moment it seemed like the most beautiful, loving, sweet thing you could do. I never had those kinds of feelings before in my life. Never found any of this arousing. She broke my mind. Never saw her again, 
as normal nurses came back after Sunday and I was released before the next weekend. After one night of sleeping back home, it's like my mind cleared. I was shocked with myself. Why would I let her do that? Why would I think it was hot? What's with the murderous urges I had? Why did pain feel good? I loathed myself for months. Remembering this shit, how I acted, what I thought and felt scared me and made me want to throw up for the longest time. Nowadays, 10 years later, I'm no longer bothered about this. I haven't turned into a blood freak or anything, but I have to say, whenever I see blood I no longer fear it. I don't jack off to it either. But it doesn't make me scared or disturbed. The one time my ex cut herself pretty badly and I helped her with the wound, while I got those feelings back. The urge to just do shit to her. Horrible and beautiful shit. But it disappeared as quickly as it appeared. The end.